All right, Sarah, let's take a look at your paper. MLA format first. Uh, this looks up here okay. This looks okay. A life's only guarantee. A little bit of a cliche, actually. So I bet you could work on that a little bit more. Uh, I really like the first sentence. <sighs> Although people react to it like it's a preposterous idea. I don't know if that's the right tone. I like the word, but I don't know if it's the right tone for what you're really trying to get across. But think about it in the future. Uh, and the poem. Okay. Here's where I would uh, change this. So the offer shifts from the tone, uh, shifts the tone from stupefied to reminiscent to acceptance, ultimately to show the different phases in coping with death. I don't need you. I don't think you need to have the concluding in there. And I think it works as a, you know, it kind of creates a rhythm. Stupefied to reminiscent to acceptance, or uh, and finally to acceptance or something like that. I don't know the concluding with it. Just doesn't. It doesn't flow right with the sentence. This one though. Um, I think this sentence works less on that level. When a loved one dies, uh, startled and melancholy, then reflective on the past, eventually mournfully tolerant, which is basically you're just repeating these tone words. So I'm not sure if that works. Um, maybe, maybe move it up so it's a little bit further away from that. I don't know. So he uses it to show the spontaneity and inevitable death. I probably approved this thesis statement for you. And I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thesis statement, but I'm really intrigued by how you tackle this in the body, whether it's very plain and very, oh, well, you know, death is spontaneous, moving on, or whether you actually get into it. So I'm really intrigued to see how that works out as I get reading. All right, one thing be careful of is too many spaces. You got too many spaces in here, a couple different spots. I know a lot of kids had a problem with that for some reason, so... Watch for that. Okay, remember when um, we tackled diction, which is what this paragraph is about, it's talking about connotation to words. So when you look at wonder and astonish, when we look at the, the connotation of it. So you get to the idea that they're caught off guard. Uh, was an unanticipated suicide. The author is bringing light to the fact that fake happiness on the surface never results in real joy. This is just the beginning of your analysis. This is a really good setup sentence for analysis and then you automatically switch gears. So I still think you need to take it a step further and that's what I was getting I was afraid of when I you know looked at this thesis again. I kept, I kept thinking okay are you gonna take it you know dive into it a little bit and you dive back into it a little bit you know down here um, least to abundance of sugar-coated situations, people choose to be naive to the warning sides, and that you're getting to more of a universal truth and a universal concept with this, which is what you need to do more so up here. Um, so just dive a little bit deeper there. Um, so again, with addiction and a connotative meaning, when we get back into little body um, and lightness. I feel like little body might be more of a detail than than diction, so I'd be careful of that. Lightness is okay. It romanticizes the idea that she was sickly, unstable, and, and frail. Can you romanticize something that is negative? Uh, I guess you can, but I don't know if you ever really get into why that would be romanticizing to have those unflattering words. Um, other than you say she's naive, he's naive to the warning signs. Uh, I don't know if you're quite quite got there to, to connecting those two. Make sure you have a strong transition between this and this. So go from diction to uh, structure, it looks like. Uh, so make sure you have that strong transition there. All right, Sarah, we can call it the middle stanzas, maybe, um, instead of the midsection stanzas. That kind of sounds weird. Uh, this is too factual. We want just a little hint of, uh, uh, of, a, of a theme here. Uh, and especially I would love to, because you do talk about, you know, how it progresses with, uh, with, uh, with the structure, but then you get into the metaphor concept, which I'm not sure if you want to bring up in a structure paragraph, but, um, and again, I feel like this is more details. I feel like a lot of these are, um, detail type examples rather than focusing on structure. I like that you talk about the progression through the poem, but I don't know if you really can, are tackling it as, as easily as you could or as hard as you could with uh, some of that concept. This is, you know, more factual than, than having a kind of analysis to it. Um, uh, that seems, 
not grounded in reality, but you might want to look at that. Oh, that doesn't seem like a strong last sentence there. So anyways, go back and look at this this pat this whole uh, paragraph here, Sarah, because I'm not exactly sure um, if you're really attacking structure as much as you can. Focus on the beginning, middle, end. What message are you trying to send? How does it relate to your tone? Uh, and then bringing it all to some kind of analysis. So look at that. And again, we need a strong transition in between um, those two paragraphs. All right, so this paragraph is about detail, which I don't know if it's readily apparent that this is what you're dealing with in this whole uh, passage is about detail. detail. He says, comma, but now we are ready, probably another comma after that, meaning that some time has passed uh, and, and over the shock. That's, again, a more... Um, that, that sentence is more of a statement and not an analysis. Oh, you're still in diction again. So, the diction through the word vexed, when it brings up her own brown study, and uh, again, so is this, I don't know, is, is this really a diction? Is this really a detail? Because details are more factual things. So maybe this was supposed to be your detail paragraph, and maybe this was more of your <sighs> facts. I don't know. Sarah, we need to work on organization. I'm a little lost where, where this is going to go. Um, was astonished that Sather goes dead Now he is vexed at this recurring detail. Um, so you break it apart by, oh, now I know what you're getting at. So this is supposed to be structured by beginning, middle, and end of the poem. So you went that route, and now you're trying to tie in the diction, the details, the structure, the conflict, the details again. Okay, so you broke it apart by section and how the tone changes throughout. Uh, and I guess that's all right. So, but I want to see some stronger connections here with, with what you're writing about. Uh, not just, we know that time has passed. We need, you know, a, a reason for this. Why is it significant that time has passed? Um, so he uses diction like vexed and brown study. Uh, he's astonished at the site that grows the body. Now he's vexed at the detail, which again is, again, factual. It shifts from why to how. You don't need a... Um, uh, and a uh, question mark is an end punctuation, so you don't need that period there. Bothered by how the body sits so perfectly, not an accurate uh, presentation, representation. Uh, truth should be concealed or disguised, no matter how grave. This, again, this is just the start of some analysis, and then you stop right there. So you need to really work on that. So now you get into the structure again. Um, is ironically systematic in structure, four lines of each of the five stanzas. Even though Ransom realizes the randomness, spontaneous of life, he still chose to write in an orderly fashion. It's a mockery in itself. Okay. Always changing, while death is a rock-solid, permanent, unwavering. Okay, this kind of information, the, the whole stanza thing, I think you can even bring up at the beginning of your piece. Um, and just get it right out in the open that he has this in here. Um, and that way you don't have to wait to the very end to talk about it. But a lot of this information I think you can move up. Um, and maybe maybe you just have a separate you know structure paragraph. But I felt like your whole poem was based on structure and not separating those out. So again, sir, I think we just need to work on organization and what works well and where. So you get to the conclusion. Use your... Uh, restate your uh, thesis statement. Um, talks about uh, the different tones, stupefied, no comment, reminiscent, uh, and finally to a, oh, I'm sorry, keep the comma there. I'm sorry. Shift from stupefied, comma to reminiscent, comma, and finally to acceptance, no comma there. Equates the natural feeling someone acquires when a loved one passes away. Uh, so you talk about details and repetition. Uh, so we have. Uh, no, we have a space there that we don't need, uh, that we got to get rid of. As we get to the end part, uh, 
death can be found, I'm sorry, coming can be found, and death being equally impartial to everyone. Truth is truth, no matter if acknowledged or not. Uh, that's a weak way to end it. Go back to your theme and see if you can end it some other way, or go back to your uh, introduction, whatever your opening statement was, and try to end it that way. Uh, this woman is not the writer of the website, I'm assuming. She's not the one who created it, so just start with the poem title, and you will be all set. Okay, Sarah, so let's work on organization. Let's work on a few more details, and uh, hopefully we'll make this better.